Today we're going to have a chat about how we can get more miniatures on the board and hopefully save a bit of time in doing so. Hello and welcome back to Orspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop, although today we're talking a bit more about how we get the most out of our time invested in our hobby hours. Painting and modelling is definitely an enjoyable part of the hobby that I don't tend to talk about quite so much on this channel, mainly because there are people who paint and model their armies quite a lot better than me. I think there's certainly some interesting discussion we can have about the time investment in the painting process, however, as in general my feeling is that when we paint miniatures, we want the best result for our work in the least time possible. In general I feel with painting you can either get better at producing more quality work, or you can get faster and learn shortcuts at producing work that is the same quality already, and that's what I thought we'd talk about today. If your main aim is to get a army painted on the table as quickly as possible, then what are the time saving shortcuts that you can use? In this video we're just going to have a talk through a few of the different options. I'm sure if you give it a quick search then there'll be YouTube videos aplenty that will explain any one of these in massive detail, including better visual tutorials of how to do them, but in this one I'm just going to talk through some of the general ideas. All that being said, let's get into it and try and get more miniatures painted in the same time. One of the first steps that you can take in saving time for yourself is recognising that some armies, some colour schemes and some colours in themselves are going to take longer to paint when compared with others. For example, if you choose an army that has lots of really subtle details that typically need to be picked out in different colours, you're going to spend longer doing that than you would if you picked something that's very simple. The archetype of this one really are Necrons. Your standard Necron warrior could quite easily be painted in silver, dipped in a black wash, Pick out a few little details with black and green and you're already done. Churning out an entire army of Necrons painted to a simple level is generally going to be far easier than painting up some of, say, the new Sisters of Battle, which have multiple tones including armour, cloth and skin tones as well, all within the same army, rather than fairly uniform metal throughout. It also depends on exactly how complicated you're going to make the colour scheme. For example, you could have a Space Marine chapter where you're just going to have them have red armour throughout. Naturally, that's going to be simple to realise compared with having a chapter that's got red armour as the base colour, and maybe the pauldrons and part of the backpack highlighted in white, or more complicated divisions of the armour panels like you have on Howling Griffins. In general, the more complicated colour schemes will be a bit more rewarding to look at as the finished job, but sometimes a well-executed, fairly simple scheme can sometimes look better as a top-down hole on an army. Some colours are notoriously more difficult to paint than others, Things like white and yellow, for example, tend to have more work and more time invested to make them look realistic, particularly if you're wanting to do highlights and shading, compared with slightly darker colours, things like red, blue or green. Obviously it depends on exactly how you're planning on getting these colours onto your models, but in general lighter paints will need more coats of pigment applied if you want to get a nice matte finish throughout. For example, on that Red Space Marines chapter, you might need a few coats of white to make those pauldrons white, whereas if you just wanted to pick the pauldrons out in green, for example, one coat might have sufficed. In picking your scheme as well, it can be very helpful and very time-saving to acquire a spray paint in the base colour scheme for your army. If you have a paint that you don't even need to brush on, if you can just batch spray an entire squad at a time, then you're going to be done a lot faster than if you're individually having to brush each model over the vast majority of their whole surface. Again, with those Necrons or Space Marines, just spray them silver or just spray them red, and that's the majority of the paint you'll ever need to apply to the model. If you're going for something that doesn't have a base spray, or you can't get an airbrush paint for in the exact colour scheme, it is likely to take a bit longer. In terms of spraying undercoats as well, you can often use sub-assemblers. Sub-assemblers are the process of not entirely putting your model together to start with, so you could perhaps spray one part of the model one colour and another part a different one. Probably the easiest example I've seen of this one are with Imperial Knights, where the miniature essentially comes as an entire load of glue-on armour plates that fits over a sort of exo underskeleton underneath that. The metal skeleton underneath is typically painted silver or some other metallic colour and the army plates are sprayed the colour of the household. Compared with if you just assemble the entire model all in one go, you'd only be able to spray it either all silver or all your chosen household colour and then you'd have to lightly brush in the other colour by hand which takes quite a long time. Frankly I wish I'd thought about that a bit more before assembling my knights as brushing in all the metal did take quite a while and was definitely a delay to getting the project done. Sometimes you might be able to use this with even smaller parts of miniatures, particularly if you're a fan of swapping weapon options out with magnets. I magnetise a decent amount of my troops' weapons to hold, which means that, say if I'm using my space marines, I can spray them red, and then spray the gun and war gear options black, which is the main colour that I usually paint my weapons. It's not the biggest deal ever, but it certainly saves a little bit of time rather than brushing it in. The other way of spray paint applying to models is of course airbrushing. 
which I fully admit isn't something that newer hobbyists are going to be getting on board with straight away, at least for the vast majority of them. If you have the time and are willing to put in a bit of learning to figure out how airbrushes work, then they most certainly are a time-saving tool. I do have one myself, and for the majority of my armies, I mainly just use it to apply undercoats of different colours, mainly because the spray paint reds that were available didn't really match the ones that I'd already painted my army from previous editions, so I tend to undercoat my space marines white, and then airbrush on the reds to get the exact same colour match. They're all manner of fancy and clever things that you can do with airbrushes. Rather than just spray undercoating, you can also create slightly zenithal highlights, where you create the effect of the light falling from above by applying lighter pigment from a top-down direction onto the model. And for bigger models, you can absolutely certainly paint the entire model with an airbrush, although usually you might need to use a little bit of masking tape to make sure that the various areas don't just all blur into each other. I think those are the main ways that you can save time with airbrushes. Of course, you can also go into all sorts of fancy effects, like using stencils and blending and things like that, if you should so wish. After you've got the broad stroke colours onto your model, then there are different ways that you can pick out detail. Probably the most labour intensive is hard edge highlighting and shading in the recesses, which is what I've always done with my space ruins, and is definitely a major contributing factor as to why I don't get very many models painted very quickly. In general, using things like washes, where you use a very thinned out paint that you can buy from Games Workshop or many other supplies to add shade in the recesses, and using dry brushes, where you scrub all the paint off the brush to the extent where you're only leaving a very small amount left on the brush to pick out the highlights, are generally very fast ways of applying shading and highlighting to the same miniature, while only having to deal with the broad strokes rather than minutely pick out every single detail. In a similar vein, Citadel Contrast Paints are a really decent innovation that Games Workshop have come up with to getting more miniatures painted quickly on the battlefield. These are the ones where you put down a light undercoat of some sort, and then you apply a fairly thick layer of the contrast paint over the top of the model, and it sort of naturally pulls the recesses and leaves highlights on the more exposed areas, and it gets miniatures on the battlefield very, very quickly. I do think that they work far better on things that have more flesh tones or more built up detail. Things like Chaos Demons are absolutely ideal for contrast paints, and it's a little bit less impressive on big flat armour plates things like Space Marines have, but they certainly still get the job done, even on Marines. You can of course also combine them with other techniques, maybe use the contrast paints over areas of flesh tone and things, and use different techniques on areas of armour. I also quite like using the contrast paints as a shade in the recesses of the model, as they're a little bit thicker than a wash. For example, I quite using the brown contrast paint on red space marines, detailed carefully into the recesses where it sits quite nicely and provides some decent shading. There are other options once you step outside Citadel as well. Army Paint a Quick Shade is certainly an option I've heard a lot of good things about, although I can't say that I've used it myself. I believe that the idea is that you paint an undercoat over a model, then dip it in the Quick Shade, which again naturally pulls to the recesses and creates areas of light and shadow, and then you varnish it afterwards with a spray to remove any matte shine effect. I have heard criticisms that it makes your army look rather homogenised and maybe a bit brown and shady, but it really honestly isn't the worst aesthetic in the world, if you're happy with going with that sort of stylistic choice. So that's the techniques, and you now need to decide how you're actually going to apply them to your miniatures in question. Basically, when you're setting out on any sort of army project, you need to remember that every single step that you build in for yourself when painting a miniature will add extra time every single time you paint a model. If you use 12 different colours over the course of a model to pick out various details, then it is going to take that many steps each time, and it almost certainly will take you a fair bit longer than if you used 6 for example. You basically need to decide what sort of detail you want to go in on the models, versus the time cost it will take you, as the opportunity cost is going to be getting more miniatures painted. I personally approach this a little bit tactically, in terms of what sort of details both you and your opponents are likely to actually notice when you're playing games. There are very fastidious people who would paint the underside of tanks and insides of any doors that opens, even though in most normal circumstances they aren't going to be seen at all on the table. I certainly used to always do this religiously, but now I tend to just put something very very basic down on any areas of the model that aren't really likely to be seen in day to day games. There's also some areas of the miniatures that aren't likely to be seen that much in normal play, or at least likely to be noticed by people if they're not painted quite as well. For example, I took my Imperial Knights to a tournament once, and didn't have time to finish all the paint jobs, but I did manage to get a fair bit of the freehand done on the top of the holes. I had the front chest plates of the Knights pretty much unpainted on all of them, but still managed to get nominated for Best Painted Army Award, which I was quite proud about but I was quite surprised that nobody even noticed the fact that part of the models were unfinished with painting, because people were too busy looking at the prominent area that was painted, and painted quite well. I think that this is definitely a decent example of how an army can look really good, even when it's not even technically finished. 
Another area that I've really noticed that it's just not always worth making massive amounts of effort with are huge ranks of infantry when you're playing some sort of horde army. My orc army I spent quite a lot of effort with really making a decent paint job of every single boy in the ranks, but whenever I was playing a game, very few people actually seemed to notice that they were well painted or not, because it all just blurs into a big sea of bodies. And by contrast, I've had another couple of best painted nominations at very small tournaments, where I've had a few fairly nicely painted centerpiece models in Lehman Rosses and Knights, and then hordes of guardsmen that weren't particularly well painted at all, but no one really seems to be all that bothered, provided they're painted neatly, look good en masse, and provide sort of a decent backdrop to your main centerpiece models where you should actually make a bit more effort with. That's why I generally recommend focusing on heroes, characters, and big vehicles and things. Basically my overall message from that section is to invest the time and effort in areas that matter in your army and don't be afraid to cut back a little bit in some bits of unnecessary detail or areas of your model or army where the end result will still look pretty awesome even if those particular areas aren't painted to your absolute top standard. Finally, in terms of ways that you paint, in general batch painting is going to be more efficient than painting each miniature individually as is sitting down and efficiently trying to get through a large amount of models rather than picking it away piecemeal. If it's absolute amount of time for amount of miniatures out, then batch painting and sitting down for a load of miniatures in one go is generally going to get you the best output, but that's assuming that you're maximally motivated and you're going to be happy to just sit there painting miniatures for quite a long time in a slightly repetitive way. The majority of us as wargamers get at least some pleasure from the way that they paint and model their guys, so you do need to make sure that your hobby time isn't just becoming more work time, even if you really do want the end result of that awesomely painted army. I think that getting entertainment while you're painting is particularly helpful, either sitting down and painting while socialising with friends, or maybe over internet at the moment during the current pandemic, or listening to audiobooks or YouTube videos by Allspex Tactics, though I hear that there are other makers of Warhammer YouTube videos out there. Finally, once you've finished the process of painting, I really do recommend a matte varnish to make sure the model's hard wearing and durable as you really don't want to be going back over the same model, picking up any chips and scratches a few months down the line, as it might slow you down later on. Anyway, I hope that that was some help in terms of some ideas to speed up your painting process. If you've got any other insights, then please let me know down in the comments below, as I'm absolutely certain that this won't be a complete list. We'll be returning to our regular scheduled 40k tactics content tomorrow, and if you'd like to hear more from Allspex Tactics, feel free to subscribe. We generally have videos coming out every single day. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page, it's making all this content does take a fair bit of time, so if you are listening regularly and enjoying, any support is much appreciated, even if it is a very small amount per month. The Patreon is what allows me to focus on making these videos at the expense of my regular job, so any support is greatly appreciated, and of course a massive thank you to my regular Patreons. This channel wouldn't be where it is today without you guys. In any case, a big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.